Hi, I'm Phil Hill, and welcome back to eLiterate TV. Today, we're with Denise Comer and Dorian Canellis, both from Duke University. And both of you have taught MOOCs, and you have a research project that's been funded as part of this research initiative here. So start out, um, Denise, tell me a little bit about your course and about the project. I taught an English composition MOOC that ran for 12 weeks in the beginning of this year of 2013. Mm -hmm. And it offered students instruction in how to design, develop an argument and how to integrate evidence. Mm -hmm. And they did four major writing projects. We had a lot of peer-to-peer -peer interaction, as all MOOCs do on the discussion forums. Sure. And but my course also had peer-to-peer -peer interaction through feedback on the writing projects. They mm -hmm. gave each other formative and evaluative uh, feedback. Sure. And Dorian, tell me a little bit about your course. Okay, I teach an uh, introduction to chemistry course at Duke University that's designed for people who don't have a strong background in chemistry. And what I learned when I began teaching that is that even people who have extremely strong academic credentials may not know the basics of chemistry, such as that all matter is made of atoms and molecules. So. I decided then to convert that into a MOOC to broaden the audience that's available to have for that information. Um, in the on-campus class, there's a lot of small group discussion and interaction. So one of the things I was interested in with the MOOC was how I could translate that active learning and interaction into an online environment. And I think we found ways with the platform to make that work. Sure. So what's the common thread with these two different courses, two different disciplines? Uh, tell me what's the commonality or what the research project is. Well, the commonality is that they're both introductory level courses. Okay. And we're really interested in how writing can help uh, move students toward their learning goals mm -hmm. and uh, writing is, is a high impact kind of methodology and so writing helps people understand a concept better sure. and because MOOCs are text based in the discussion forums there's writing happening all the time whether it's explicitly a writing course or not and so we were really interested in this interdisciplinary uh, component, right? How does writing operate in a writing-based MOOC and then in a, in a science-based MOOC? So given that, what are you hoping to learn from the project? Well, I think that there, there are differences between learning to write and writing to learn. Um, but we know from lots of literature and academia that people learn when they explain things and when they discuss things. And so here, we're use, the students will be using writing to both explain and discuss, to review each other's writing, to gain the support, develop community, and we've set up a coding system with some collaborators to analyze the student's writing in a way that we can code what people's affect is, what types of posts are they making, what types of feedback do they give each other, et cetera, things like that. And Denise can tell you more about the research team. Sure. So our research team um, consists of collaborators from the Department of Developmental Psychology, and they have experience working with a qualitative analysis of Facebook posts sure. and so they they adapted a coding protocol that they used in that context to look at the kinds of peer to peer interactions through writing that happen on our forums and in our peer review and so we're looking at things like the uh, number of posts that people do the types of posts uh, whether what what students goals were in initiating a post whether that um, post had a response and if so what are the characteristics sure. of that response and some of the interesting things that we're going to be asking are is there competitiveness in these posts? Is there sympathy? Is there encouragement, support? So would this information really help you at the course design level so to improve course design? Or would it be fed back to students as formative assessment? Or do we know how this information would be used? I'm sure that what we learn, what I'll learn from teaching this, the MOOC will help me, will help inform my teaching of the Duke uh, students because I've learned even by having a more flipped environment in the class where I, where I get to have conversations more with the students, I'm starting to learn more about what their common um, misconceptions are. And so I think that looking at this peer-to-peer uh, -peer dialogue on the forums will give us a very rich understanding of what types of discussions students are having and that can't, can't but help turn back and improve what we're doing in the classroom as well. Okay, so if you look more broadly than just your project, since you guys have both taught MOOCs, but you're also doing research on it, what should we know a year from now about MOOCs that we don't really know today? I'm interested really in understanding what kinds of metrics to use to 
to better understand a success of a MOOC okay. or, or efficacy of a MOOC. So uh, we are interested in correlating some of what we find to student retention and performance in the course, uh, but maybe those aren't the right kinds of sure. correlations to be making. And so I'm hoping that all of the research and aggregate that's happening around MOOCs will help us develop better uh, terminology for these metrics. And, and I'm also hoping that, that what we know works well in education in terms of people constructing their own knowledge and being interactive and active in their learning, um, that we can look at how that's happening at, in the MOOCs and to what extent. If it isn't happening to the extent that we would like, that we can then try to do things to improve that type of interaction uh, in the MOOCs. So that's what I'm really interested in is how people are learning in the MOOCs using the types of, of avenues that we already know students use in learning. And I'll just add, because I'm a writing teacher, sure. that um, I am really interested in thinking about how writing intersects with MOOCs in sure. general and yes. how writing can really just um, be, be dispersed throughout this whole process. Well, this has been a fascinating conversation about the research on two different MOOC courses at Duke University, but I want to thank uh, Denise Comer and uh, Dorian Canellis for being here with us today. So, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, you. Phil.